Welcome back to the channel guys. It's Friday and I've got that Friday feeling so I just thought today let's talk about the big stick, the driver. I wanted to give you a 101 on good driving and hopefully there'll be something in here that goes a little way to helping you hit more fairways this coming weekend. The driver is a magical golf club, makes us feel super powerful, super enjoyable when we're hitting those fairways, but when it's not going so, so well, it sure makes us feel a little silly. Hopefully by now you've watched a good few of my videos and you're starting to understand how I apply myself to my golf swing and the knowledge that I try to share with my students. I'm gonna get myself teed up with the driver and I'm gonna talk you through what we've got up on the screen. So we've got attack angle. If you haven't seen it by now, my attack angle video that talks about hitting up, hitting down and the relationship with T height. Got the face to path value. If by now you haven't worked that one out, the face relative to the path, whether it's closed or whether it's uh, open. If it's a negative value, we should see draw. If, an, if it's a positive value, we should see fade. The spin axis on the golf ball, the bend that we will see in the sky, well, that's gonna be dictated by the curvature as well. The driver is a bit of a, um, how can I put it? Uh, devil when it comes to strike and golf swing. And what I mean by that is you can feel a draw bias in your golf swing, hit it out the heel, and you'll see fade. But what you will feel is the fade type swing more than the draw type swing. And what I mean by that, I could create a draw swing, hit it out the heel and hit a fade. And I just wanted to bring that into the, the melting pot before we get going. So let's hit one. And I'm just gonna talk you through a little bit of data. As per usual, I haven't hit any shots. So straight into driver, so it could be a magical mystery tour. Not using a glove either, so get all the excuses out early, Stuart. And we're away and down the fairway. So what have we, what have we got going on here? We've got a face to path value of negative 0.8. For you out there that understand that, a negative value on the face to path should mean that we saw a, a draw in the sky. The spin axis is a positive one. It tells us that the ball is bending to the right. But of course, we can see that by the graphic on the screen. And I had nine feet of curvature left to right. The appraisal of that shot for me as a golfer would not be about what did I feel in my swing, it would be what about what did I feel in the strike. Because I know that the strike, when I'm driving the golf ball, will determine the ball flight and the strike will put me off the scent with what my golf swing did. So if I felt like I struck the golf ball out the hill and I saw fade, I know I need to fix the strike first before I fix the swing. So if you don't know where you're hitting your golf ball out of the face with your driver, I would say you're giving up 90% of the insight and opportunity to make yourself hit more fairways. So that's key number one. So we go back in, I'm now gonna hit a driver. Now I'm gonna try to get myself striking it more out the toe. That was definitely more out the toe. And so much so, you can see I made a golf swing that created a face to path value that was positive 2.9. But we saw four feet of left bend, left curvature. The spin axis was minus 0.9. All I did to correct the shape I saw in the sky was to move the contact more to the toe. If you've seen one of my videos on the ultimate uh, 
contact video. I think that's the name of it. Might not be, but anyway, the link will be up in the top left-hand corner. You will appreciate that being able to control the strike on the face is a skill that needs practicing. So check that video out, because that will help you, particularly with your irons, but it's translatable to the driver. So I've hit two drivers. The first one had a, a negative face to path that we should have seen draw. And the second one, we had a positive face to path and we should have seen fade. And we've seen absolutely the opposite in shape on both of those shots. Let's go again. The top of the pile, therefore, when you're driving the golf ball, you need to be aware of where the contact point is. Now, on both of those shots, if I'd have seen one fade and one draw, as long as I've hit the fairway and I understand where I struck the golf ball and I know that strike delivered that flight, for me, it makes me feel secure and safe in the knowledge that when I go to the next tee shot, I need to control my strike, not necessarily my swing. Because I don't really care whether I had a slightly open face to path or a, a negative face to path. All I care about is that if I hit the ball very close to the center, I'm gonna have a decent opportunity of actually hitting the ball fairly straight. It's almost to the point, if I whack it out the toe, I'm gonna to see a draw. If I'm gonna whack it out the heel, I'm gonna see a fade. If your golf swing is biased in one direction, i.e. if you're a fader of the golf ball, air towards the toe. If you're a hooker of the golf ball, air towards the heel. Because that way you're gonna counteract your golf swing and it will just give you more chance of hitting fairways. My attack angle was four degrees up. Now, if you've seen my attack angle uh, golf swing, you'll understand that the golf swing club down at the bottom is swinging past me, which is creating the upstrike. I'm not trying to create the upstrike through, through my body. I'm trying to create the upstrike by the golf club unloading. So if I want to create a bit more downstrike, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the handle pull for a little bit longer, keep my grip nice and light, and that way I'll then strike down. So that one will have created more downstrike. So I'm now down at 1.8 down. We saw a face to path value very, very straight. And you can see the ball had a little bit of left to right spin on it. It's normally four, four to one thereabouts, face to path through axis, so I know I hit it fairly central in the face. And that's why I saw 16 degrees of left to right bend. These insights are making me understand what I'm doing in terms of my golf swing, what it's producing, very neutral numbers with my face to path. What I'm actually seeing in the sky is more reflective of the strike. Hopefully that's coming through. Now, when I play golf and I, and I go about assessing the shot that I want to play, I'm always thinking about what part of the fairway do I want to try and place my ball in. And so I would never worry about how far in this section of the fairway I'd hit. So either the left section or the right section, as long as my golf ball hits in that section. I'm never, I'm never trying to play my golf ball down this section. I'm either trying to play it down the left section or the right section of the, of the fairway. Even skirting the left trees or the right trees. So on a shot like this, and, and you know, the, 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 the 18th hole at St Andrews strike fear of God into many a tour player. God knows why, because it's the easiest fairway to hit in the world as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I couldn't convince Nick Doherty of that. <laughs> if you're watching Nick, sorry about that, throw you under the bus. So I'm gonna hit this one up the right-hand side. Now up the right-hand side, I've got some out of bounds, I've got the Russex Hotel, I've got the Swilkin Bridge that no longer looks like a penis, which is good to, good to, <laughs> good to see. Uh, and so I've got a few options here. I can either aim up the line of my fairway, and make sure that I'm airing on the side of open face with a healing strike, let's say. Or I could 
aim up the right, air on the side of a toe strike with a slightly draw by a swing and hit it to the left. So I'm going to play both for you. First one, I want to hit it up and start it up the right hand side towards just left of the Russell's Hotel. I'm going to try and start it over the, uh, over the Swilkin Bridge. Now, to make that happen, and this is where the growth of knowledge with the driver and Trackman and how we move is really, really influential. And I hope that over time in, on this channel, I really start to build your knowledge of how this all works because it's super easy to do. When the pressure's on, less so, but nevertheless, it's super easy to do. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna move my ball further forwards in my stance. That's gonna give me an opportunity to do two things. It's gonna give me the opportunity to hit more up on the golf ball without doing anything. But not only that, when the ball is further forwards in my stance, it means that the golf club starts to swing more inside. And if the club's starting to swing more inside, it means I've got more chance of catching it slightly out the toe. But I need to sort of embrace that. So I'm gonna aim up the right. My start line is my aim point. So I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna aim myself where I want the golf ball to start. I know it doesn't start that way, but that's gonna make sure my path is right enough. Because when I swing up on this, I know the face is gonna look left of that start line. So it's gonna start even further left. So I'm gonna aim up at the russocks. I've got the ball a little bit further forwards than I would do normally. And then I'm gonna absolutely melt it. Definitely caught her out the toe. Definitely hit up on it. And there she is drawing back into the fairway. So I hit up 4.6. My face to path was actually open 1.5. But because I hit it out the toe, look at the spin axis. It's 18 degrees shut. And the only reason why that ball drew is because of my strike point. If I'd have hit that one out the middle, that would have been starting over the, over the Swilkin Bridge and fading into the Russocks. So you can see, once again, that having a good face to path value, my friends, is an utter waste of time. You need to be out there controlling where you're striking it on the face. So now, I'm going to set one off down the left. I'm going to aim just up by the, I think that's the, the museum, isn't it? I can't remember what that is, but it's just but the left hand side is the putting green there. And I'm going to aim to, to move this back into the fairway. Now I'm going to keep exactly the same for me. I'm going to keep it up, maybe not quite as much up as I did with the draw, but I am going to air on the side of a heel strike just so that I make sure that I get the ball to draw because it's easy to get one out the toe and aiming up the left with a fade bias, as you've just seen, that would be super easy to, to then double cross yourself. And I think when you hear the guys on the TV when they talk about double cross with driver, it's because they've whacked it out the wrong part of the club face. It's got nothing to do with whether they've made a bad swing or not in the main. In the main. So, up the left, let's play a little Virginia. So definitely hit it out the, out the heel. My face to path was only one degree open, but yet we saw 14.3 of open face to path and an 81 feet curvature. Once again, on both of those swings, my face to path was within 0.1 of each other, but look how different the ball flight was in both cases. The attack angle was slightly down, making the path go a bit more left, feeling a fade. Instinctively, it's easier to hit a bit more down on it, but I still hit up on it. And I've hit both, as I say, hit both of those shots just by the contact. Now I'm going to try and hit one straight down that white line, which is what all of you will be doing out there. Correct me if I'm wrong. Tell me how you drive it and what you think about on the tee. Do you aim straight? Do you aim up the right? And do you think about ball striking with your driver? More so with the driver. While you're here, give us a like and a share. That'd be much appreciated. So let's aim dead straight at the target. And now what I've got to do, because I'm aiming dead straight, if I don't get my face to path lined up 
and I get the strike lined up, I'm in curtains because I know that that ball's gonna draw or fade off it. But let's give it a try. So let's see how close I got to it. So face to path was one. Spin axis was seven. Got 39 feet of, of fade. I therefore hit it out the heel. Not by much though. Remember, it's a graphic, so might not have seen quite as much curvature in the sky when I'm out playing. But hopefully that's been influential in understanding A, what I think about, B, what you need to think about in terms of the strike point and how you might want to go about strategizing your, week, your driver this weekend. Hopefully that's been helpful and hopefully you know what that is. That's good coaching. See you next time.